Fox 61 News at 10 starts now. Now at 10, an attempted purse snatch in broad daylight caught on camera with police still searching for a suspect. Plus, following the release of the Tyree Nichols video, what are psychologists saying about the impact watching this video may have on mental health? And new details emerging after a plane crash in Hartford. The Fox 61 News at 10 starts right now. Thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Carmen Chow. We begin tonight with a man in critical condition following a shooting in Hartford. Police say a man arrived to St. Francis Hospital at around 1 this morning after he was shot. Police haven't found who he is yet or where the shooting may have taken place. He remains in critical condition. If you have any information, please contact Hartford Police. And we are learning tonight a six-year-old boy fell from a ski lift at Ski Sundown today. The ski lift was about 50 15 feet high and right now we don't know the boy's condition. Officials say he was awake and breathing when Lifestar picked him up. Stay with Fox 61 as we continue to find more information on this developing story. Now to Wallingford, where police are looking for the suspects who are responsible for an attempted purse snatching incident yesterday afternoon. Around 1 p.m. at the stop and shop on North Colony Road, they say a woman was putting groceries into her car when all of a sudden a car stopped near her. One of the suspects in the car got out and snatched her purse in her shopping cart. The woman then tries to grab her purse back all while the car began to drive, dragging the woman, leaving her with minor injuries. Eventually, the suspect pushed the woman away and she did get her purse back. The car circled the lot and exited towards North Main Street. It was described as a silver four door BMW X6 with a Connecticut plate of AH38573. Police say the car was stolen out of North Haven an hour and a half prior to this incident. We spoke to Wallingford police on the phone who offered these tips. If you find yourself in a similar situation as the woman. We would urge that people um, try to let the police handle it. Uh, somebody's trying to take your purse. Uh, unfortunately, it's just property. It's not worth your life. It's not worth getting injured. So we prefer that you just, you know, unfortunately, you know, let them take it rather than put yourself at, you know, an additional uh, position of risk. Uh, call the police, be a great witness, uh, get the license plate, get the suspect descriptions, uh, give us a call, and then we'll get down there and try to handle it the best we can for you. One of the suspects was described as a man in his early 20s, about six feet tall, skinny, wearing gray shorts, a blue jacket, and a blue do rag. If you recognize this car or the suspect, please contact police immediately. Now, police have arrested a 14 year old from Woodbridge in connection to a social media threat directed at Amity Regional High School community this weekend. Officers said the teen's threat was shared with many students through Instagram, but new details were released on what the exact threat was. The team was arrested this morning and is facing charges. They are due in court tomorrow. A Meriden man was arrested after firing a gun at the mother of his child. Police say Jose Estevez waited for the victim at her home and shot at the car she was sitting in. No one was injured during the shooting. Police say Estevez was a previously convicted felon and wasn't supposed to have a gun. He was charged with criminal attempt to commit assault, criminal possession of a firearm and other crimes. He's being held on a $3 million bond. And turning now to the weather watch, we had ourselves a very mild weekend where it actually felt pretty comfortable, but all of that will go away later in the week. Let's toss it over to meteorologist Ryan Breton. Uh, Ryan looks like January suddenly decided it wants to feel like January, right? Yeah, especially late this week when it will actually be February, Carmen. So today, another very warm day up into the 50s across most of the state. And we actually had a few showers passing on through, but most of that action now drying up and back to the west there's a little front and there's a little bit of moisture here so there might be another shower or two that comes through tomorrow night but tonight it doesn't cool down much temperatures tomorrow morning will be in the 30s a lot of clouds during the day tomorrow with some partial sunshine and once again temperatures tomorrow getting up way up into the 40s to near 50 and then some showers will be coming in tomorrow evening we'll show you this hour by hour a lot of clouds out there through the day tomorrow a couple of showers developing late in the 
day, which may even mix with a little bit of wet snow, but nothing more than just a dusting in northern Connecticut. Then it's out of here on Tuesday. But the big story, a big drop in temperature later this week. Highs on Saturday in the teens and the wind chills look brutal. I'll be back to talk more about that coming up, Carmen. All right, Ryan, thank you. Another day of protesting in Memphis and around the country following the release of body cam video showing the violent arrest of 29 year old Tyree Nichols. The video shows how five Memphis police officers restrain, tase, pepper spray and beat Nichols all while he desperately calls for his mother. Demonstrators pushing for reform and standing with the Nichols family during their time of grief. We have to stand up for injustice and we have to have police reform. This cannot keep happening over and over and over again. Reverend Al Sharpton also shared he hopes this event brings action from Congress. This U.S. Senate and this Congress needs to deal with these civil rights issues of these times and that is the George Floyd bill and the policing act and we're going to come out of Memphis and fight like we never fought before to pass federal policing law. Now, all this comes as family and friends of Tyree Nichols will say their final goodbyes this upcoming Wednesday. Nichols' funeral will be held at the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis at 1030 in the morning. Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. The graphic content in the Tyree Nichols video released Friday night is raising concerns about how it might impact your mental health. Fox 61's DeAndre Turner spoke with a psychologist today about how watching this video could impact you. She joins us in the studio with more. DeAndrea? Well, Carmen, today I spoke with Dr. James O'Day. He tells me that if you haven't watched the video, to be aware of your own limits and the capacity to be able to watch and process this. You don't have to watch it if you don't want to. But if you have watched it, there are some things to be aware of. In a warning, warning tonight, we are going to be showing some parts of that video. So please step away if you don't want to see it. It's becoming too common to see black men killed on film. And it's hard for me to watch things like that any longer. Just days after the video of 29 year old Tyree Nichols being brutally beaten by five Memphis police officers has been released. Some people can't bring themselves to watch it. I didn't watch the video because it's traumatizing for me. The video showing the sequence of events that ultimately led up to Tyree's death three days later. Mental health professionals say that watching this video has the potential to unlock emotional ramifications. For certain communities, particularly persons of color, watching another black American be brutalized by law enforcement is has the potential to exacerbate otherwise, you know, feelings of um, not being in control, feeling at risk, feeling anxious, feeling uh, irritable. He also says that it has the potential to cause the opposite effect. For certain audiences, it runs the risk of just sort of anesthetizing people to the risk that you get, begin to sort of become just sort of numb to the experience. That feeling is something common for Josephine Mitchell, who's watched the video. And did it impact you in any type of psychological way just to see that video put out there like that? No, because I've seen it so many times. Like Eric Garner in 2014 to more recently George Floyd, both men's death being caught on camera. And the video imagery in particular kind of lodges in the brain in a different way than reading about it in a newspaper or in an article. It's, it's sadness all the way around. It's just sad. Now, Dr. O'Day also says that if you have watched this video to take care of yourself, if you need help, ask for it. Limit your screen time and lean on your community. In the studio, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61 News. All right, DeAndrea, thank you. Now, moving back locally, we have new details this evening after a pilot was hospitalized following a single engine plane crash at Harford Brainerd Airport. The Connecticut Airport Authority says the crash happened just after the plane took off. There is still no information on the severity of the pilot's injuries. The airport was closed for a short time yesterday, but reopened last night. The crash remains under investigation. 
And a man and a woman have been arrested in connection to a shooting at a Burger King in West Haven on Saturday that left one man in critical condition. 31 year old Travis Mingo and 29 year old Barbie Barbosa have been arrested after a verbal fight led to the shooting of a 37 year old West Haven man. Police say this happened at the Burger King on Campbell Avenue around 4 p.m. yesterday. Mingo is charged with assault and other charges. Both Mingo and Barbosa are charged with risk of injury to minor as Barbosa's six-year-old daughter was present during the shooting. The Naugatuck man accused of murdering his baby daughter is set to appear in court tomorrow. Christopher Francis Queenie is accused of killing his 11-month-old daughter Camilla back in November. He led investigators on a two-week manhunt before being arrested. He first appeared in court back in early December but did not enter a plea. The parents charged after their one-year-old child died from a fentanyl exposure are due in court tomorrow. 37-year-old Travis Schubel and 28-year-old Ricky Thomas were arrested after their one-year-old daughter died in February of last year. Police say they found a used Narcan cartridge under the baby's pack and play where she was sleeping. They also found, quote, multiple capped and uncapped needles, numerous yellow baggies, small yellow bands, and a pink white pill in capsule form. Detectives said conditions were deplorable inside of the home. Both are charged with second degree manslaughter, risk of injury to a child, and other drug related charges.